this uh, fake news. Um, she is a, a click worker uh, from Bangladesh and she is actually uh, describing herself as a social media marketing expert who can sell you six million uh, clicks or views depending on the, the platform you're on. Uh, now, of course, this is sometimes uh, uh, disconcerting to people who are rich underground producers uh, as, you know, the characters that are described in the press as trolls, usually they are Russian, I mean at least here in Europe, I was in Taiwan and there all the trolls are Chinese, troll, you know, and, uh, and of course, I mean, uh, troll, I mean, this kind of character here involves uh, some kind of level of, uh, um, you know, uh, digital uh, proficiency or skills or high skills, you're supposed to be uh, quite of a hacker to do trolling, uh, to perform trolling uh, successfully. In other cases, the media also love to, um, you know, circulate narratives about fake news spread by bots, and bots, of course, is a very eluding concept, uh, which sometimes just suggests that you can automate some your uh, online communication. For instance, I mean, anybody has been trying at least once, you know, to automate one, you know, face or tweeting, establishing that a certain tweet so, because especially when we bots, we are somehow insisting or underlying uh, present day communication. And of course, when it comes to automation and fake news and the spread of fake news and other culprit is, uh, well, algorithms. Uh, algorithms on social media, uh, when everything bad happened around 2016 in the US, at least around the presidential elections, uh, the criticism was Facebook uh, uh, trend, uh, trending algorithm, news trending algorithm, and of course also there's a solution to these problems because uh, you know you have a technical problem. But another important way of uh, talking about fake news in the media is insisting on content creation. And there the situation gets more complicated because you cannot automate everything and eventually it boils down to somebody down something which is blatantly false or extremely controversial. And yesterday's presentation, yesterday's talk was actually, well, okay, let going in that direction because um, the person who was uh, uh, describing her experience as a, a former AFD, um, well, uh, content manager, basically, uh, was also insisting on the fact that they had to come up with text messages and spread this information and also, in some case, videos, but you had to create contents. I would like to say that uh, in the rest of my presentation, I will not focus specifically on content. I think content uh, and focus on content is somehow misleading. We tend to focus on people who, are, uh, who have special skills, at least, skills in manipulation, skills in language, and so but uh, fake news, uh, or the pillar of fake news, at least in my, uh, as again, and circulation is, uh, well, another kind of, another type of game. Circulation is also about creating the right incentive to the message to be read, for instance, when it comes to Facebook, which, again, is a, a, a platform that we all talk about probably too much because it's kind of the McDonald of uh, social platforms for better or worse, for worse. Uh, but uh, as you know, it's mainly an advertising platform and everything is based on, uh, you know, uh, treating information as ads, basically. And so when in 2016, basically, uh, the, uh, the, the Trump campaign uh, got a lot of it was thanks to the kind of incentives that uh, Mr. Uh, Hillary Clinton as ads, and these ads were circulated on Facebook. Uh, well, basically, by uh, were not the kind, of, not the content creators, but persons like these young men from Veles in Macedonia. I might say North Macedonia now. Um, so uh, there is an entire town, a small uh, town in uh, Velas, a post-industrial town of that, where an entire generation of uh, teenagers, young adults, uh, eventually, uh, around 2016, a new profession, which was basically spreading misinformation for Donald Trump, and they were not hired by Donald Trump campaign. They were an alignment of uh, economic by spreading this controversial uh, fake news. Again, no connection uh, with Donald Trump. 
if you're looking for connection to uh, with Don, I might go a little further, not in Macedonia, but in Singapore, uh, where uh, people who were actively co working with uh, Donald Trump's campaign, uh, like a 15 years old a Singaporean student who was hired uh, by uh, Trump's campaign to produce uh, one or two uh, um, PowerPoint slides for presentation. So smaller, something that did not demand a lot of skills, something that could be done quick, something that was negotiated on a specialized platform that is called Fiverr. Forms that exist on the web for people who describe themselves as freelancers, but they are, well, um, increasingly um, working as click workers, meaning doing something extremely limited in time, one, two minutes, it takes one, two minutes to, you know, perform these tasks like producing a slide, and they earn little. Officially, Fiverr, the name seems to suggest, uh, starts with a, a $5 fee, meaning that the minimum amount you can uh, earn is $5. And, uh, well, reality is a bit comp more complicated than that. You will see it in a minute. Fiverr is one of the platforms where you can actually buy click news content and circulation. I will be back that on that in a minute. Uh, another uh, famous one, it is, it, it is really controversial and played a very important role in a scandal that you are all aware of, which is the Cambridge Analytical scandal is another platform called Amazon Mechanical Turk. Have you ever heard about Amazon Mechanical Turk? Three, four, five, good, my God. I'm very lucky. Okay, Amazon Mechanical Turk is a platform where you actually can, uh, as if you are a requester, meaning you are a, a comp or sometimes even an individual, you can publish what they called a hit, a human intelligence task. A human intelligence task is something that you are supposed to do quickly, intuitively, uh, sometimes it's just a click. You click on a button or you just give, I don't know, um, uh, I will give you in a second, you, uh, you give a word and you're paid, well, a few cents usually. In this case, this was actually a task that was circulated on uh, uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk, write a news article for a new conservative news media. The news media uh, in question was called Goldwater, and the kind of word, uh, sorry, the kind of content they were looking for is uh, uh, first something like you know, first lesbian bishop of Stockholm uh, boots Christ and welcomes Mohammed, uh, along those lines, um, and it was very well paid. Um, actually, I kind of remember, I don't see it here, but it was like a lot less than that. Uh, for those of you who never heard about Amazon Mechanical Turkey, it was, it's a platform that was launched in Turkey and nation. Uh, it actually has to do with this famous uh, well, 89 uh, by um, um, an engineer, an Austrian engineer called von Kempelen, and this was supposed to be the first um, artificial intelligence because this uh, robot disguised as a Turkish gentleman was supposed to simulate uh, human cognizes and challenge chess player. Now, now uh, a bit of a problem. It was actually a hoax. Somebody was hiding inside the robot, so the robot was not a robot, and this method was willingly uh, recycled by Jeff Bezos, who blatantly said, uh, on Amazon Mechanical Turk, we do artificial, artificial intelligence. <laughs> and uh, again, you are laughing now, but in a couple of slides, you will soon understand that uh, this is 90% of the artificial intelligence we deal with today. Meaning by that, that if you go on Amazon Mechanical Turk, you can actually request or hire for a, a limited amount of time, again, a few minutes, uh, um, uh, thousands of people. Actually, they have like uh, 500,000 users in their user base. And the idea is that you can, I don't know, simulate an artificial intelligence by hiring small hands or small fingers or people who will click and impersonate an automatic process. It goes pretty much like this. If you are a company and you have 
millions of receipts like this one and you want to transcribe and tag it in order to, for instance, I don't know, create a new search engine uh, that you know, browse through all the information in there. Well, first of all, you need to tag all these images of receipts. For, for instance, uh, is this transaction here that you see in this Walmart receipt about buying bananas or skis? Well, somebody has to write down it is about bananas or it is about skis. And a lot of these has to do with image tagging too. And again, this is one of the typical uh, tasks that you can perform if you are a micro worker, or you're for a click worker on Amazon Mechanical Turk, you tag and uh, create squares around, uh, you know, images of cars and, uh, and people and uh, traffic lights. And this is used to train, well, I should not put brackets, to train, um, for instance, a special kind of artificial intelligence, which is the one that uh, make a uh, 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 self-driving car being self-driving. It is not entirely self-driving. Now, um, and I won't insist on artificial, artificial intelligence, on, on, on the, you know, the fake part of it, but I, want, I will insist on one thing that has to do with fake news circulation, uh, which is basically that these people who are, who accept to be on Amazon Mechanical Turk and on other platforms are basically performing piecework. Uh, piecework, meaning that they are paid by the task, they are not hired, they do not have a job, they do not have a formal employment, they can be hired and fired uh, in a click again. And look at the kind of pay they receive. It's not five nor twelve dollars, it's actually something around one, two, three cents. And again, you might say, oh my god, this is horrifying. Wait for it. There is uh, this supposed to be like the top of the micro-working platforms, they pay you a lot less. Interestingly enough, the first question that everybody asks me whenever I try and explain uh, how micro-works work, um, they say, okay, who accepts to be paid one, one cent, two cents? Well, uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk has a user base made up of 65% of American citizens, so there are people in the US who are interested in performing this kind of peace work. The rest is basically uh, Indian citizens. Uh, and again, okay, oh, yeah, this is seems small, reasonable. Again, India is not uh, is not a, a low-income country. It's an emerging country with a rich and thriving uh, tech uh, industry. With places like Bangalore and Hyderabad, who are the Silicon Valleys uh, of India, or one might say that Silicon Valley is the Hyderabad of uh, of the U.S. But anyway, uh, again, there are people who accept to be paid that little. In some cases, uh, the fact that you have so many American citizens on Amazon Mechanical Turk, well, can be leveraged and weaponized to circulate fake news. Meet Alexander Kogan. Uh, I suppose that you are not familiar with his name, especially because he changed his name, and I kid you not, he changed his name from Kogan to Spectre. So he's now his name is Alexander Spectre, like the ghost. And uh, this uh, researcher at Cambridge University created a company that you're probably not familiar with called SCL, Strategic Communication Lab, but you are probably familiar with the American branch of this SCL company, which is called Cambridge Analytica. And now we go back in a loop to our fake news topic. Because what happened with the Cambridge Analytica scandal, and I suppose that you're all aware of that, is that uh, uh, Facebook very heat in terms of a lot of uh, uh, criticism, but the problem is that uh, the Cambridge Analytica debacle was a combination of, well, uh, Amazon, Mechanical Turk, and Facebook, uh, they go together. Um, what happened is that basically uh, SCL slash Cambridge Analytica hired or re recruited people on Amazon Mechanical Turk to answer a psychological profiling questionnaire. And then they used that as a, a front or let's say as an excuse for the people who were recruited, and we're talking about 12,000 people, uh, recruited on Amazon Mechanical Turk to download an app that would eventually whisk and uh, uh, download all their Facebook contacts. 
And this created, of course, the first basis of several, uh, well, 100,000, no, sorry, 300,000 uh, uh, people who eventually, uh, in a snowball kind of situation, uh, built up to be, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, a 3 million, um, uh, sorry, 50 million um, user base that was used uh, uh, for profiling purposes in the Cambridge Analytica scandals. Uh, again, when the, uh, well, the, the, the public opinion, internationally speaking, discovered that uh, there was a big scandal, but this is something that in my uh, field of research, uh, again, uh, digital labor and click work is not new at all. Actually, what happened is something that is described as uh, uh, astroturfing, actually, which means uh, uh, you know, you crowd uh, some people to perform small tasks. In this case, they were supposed to uh, provide contacts. And then you use those to circulate and spread information to people who are not willing participants in your own uh, psychological, little psychological um, um, uh, experiment. And again, the point is who are those people who spread uh, these fake news who, who are willing to participate in this kind of, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, adversarial information production. Uh, when it comes to uh, um, uh, digital labor platforms, ones like, you know, uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk or Fiverr, they have, um, well, a way of describing themselves as, uh, you know, data with a human touch. Again, they, 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 they kind of put this, this front. And again, uh, let's not focus on the message. Let's focus on the image. Iconography is very important, uh, and they tend to use as front persons, persons who do not resemble their actual micro-workers. This person here is very blonde, very white. Uh, their workers are people who are somehow recruited in countries uh, like Philippines, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan. And when we actually look at the geography of work and in general, digital labor into, uh, you know, maps such as this. This map was produced in, back in 2013 uh, by my colleagues at the Oxford University, uh, Oxford Internet Institute, uh, Mark Graham and Willi de Dornwitter. And uh, uh, just to give you an idea of what's described here, of course, each circle represents a country. Bigger circles means that these countries either buy or sell microwork. And if you want to know who sells microwork, so where are the microworkers, where are the, the click workers, just look at the red of these circles. The redder the circle, the more you have microworkers in it. And the pinker, uh, the, surfer, the circle, sorry, uh, it, that means that you, these are countries that buy, that by micro work, that basically means that they recruit people to perform this kind of click work. So who are the countries, oh, who were, back in 2013, countries who uh, hired, requested, recruited micro workers? USA, Canada, Great Britain, France, and Australia. And uh, who are the countries, where are micro workers? Where were micro workers in 2013? India, Philippines, Bangladesh, Pakistan, China, Russia, Ukraine, and Poland. Things have changed since then, uh, importantly because you have a, a lot of non-English speaking platforms that, uh, you know, popped up. And so now you have very big players that were not mapped back in 2013. For instance, uh, most countries in Africa, such as Madagascar, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal and Tunisia, who are now big micro-workers providers. And interestingly enough, but it will not come as a surprise for you, um, countries like Venezuela, who are now extremely uh, prominent, prevalent, uh, hegemonic almost, uh, in terms of uh, um, micro-work production, in terms of uh, uh, the work, these are, these, Venezuela is the place where micro-workers live. Now, uh, how does the circulation of fake news and uh, of adversarial information work uh, on the internet in general? You basically have two types of modes of circulation. One is a, a hierarchical pyramid-shaped uh, one which basically means that you have a customer, usually it can be, for instance, uh, I don't know, a company or a, a party, 
or some kind of political institution too uh, that is the client at the top that uh, uh, uses an agent, an intermediary, a broker to recruit uh, information leaders, this could be, for instance, I don't know, Instagram influencers or Twitter influencers, and these influencers eventually have an army of workers that actually perform the dirty job of circulating the news by simply clicking, sharing on Facebook, liking, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, this kind of uh, uh, structure was the one that eventually led to Duterte's election, or at least was instrumental uh, in Duterte's election in the Philippines, as attested by this report produced uh, by uh, my colleagues, uh, Jonathan Corpus Ong and uh, Jason Vincent uh, Car Cabanes, pardon, sorry. Uh, and, uh, but this is not the only kind, the only type of uh, circulation. There is another one, which is uh, basically a one too many, uh, where you have the same customer, again imagine a, uh, um, a party, and this party can simply through a platform like Amazon Mechanical Turk or others recru recruit, uh, request uh, hundreds of thousands and in some cases also millions of people who are click workers. Yes. You basically buy likes, you buy likes, you buy shares, you buy many things, you buy fans, uh, again uh, somebody that you all know very, very well, uh, Donald Trump, uh, is known uh, for, well, having done this uh, back in 2016, where eventually the number of fans of his Facebook page increased overnight. By overnight, I mean from one hour to the other. And interestingly enough, uh, after this uh, big increase in the number of fans, we also discovered that the, the let's say, geography of his fans is was kind of funny. Funny. Uh, okay. Yeah. You have uh, again a lot of people coming from the Philippines. This is a major uh, constituency, and then the second one is Mexico, which is ironic, given the enormity of the things he said and done has done to Mexico since then. Now, um, again, in some cases, these people work from home. Uh, meaning that they are equipped and connected enough to, you know, have uh, uh, the possibility of working from their laptop or even their smartphone in some cases. In other cases, in, in certain countries, we have uh, what we call click farms. And uh, these click farms are actually brick and mortar structures that... 随手一个赞就是对年轻人最大的鼓励。如果你也是... And uh, actually, you know, can click on things, okay? This is a, a, a typical uh, Chinese click farm. Again, I was in Taiwan. This is why I, uh, I, I insist a lot on uh, the Chinese, uh, you know, click farmers again. China is not the only place. We have click farms everywhere, and we have click workers everywhere, and some of those click workers do a lot of fake news circulation work. Um, interestingly enough, yeah, okay, you see here the kind of working condition. This woman is working in a very uh, cold place because of uh, servers and because of the equipment. Uh, so she's wearing a heavy coat and she has some kind of gloves and uh, uh, with a chair. Uh, she moves uh, quickly, swiftly from one uh, um, uh, screen to the other and clicks on, well, not random information. She has a certain um, task, a certain number of tasks that she has to perform in order, for instance, uh, for one information to be better ranked in, a, um, I don't know, a search engine or to be, uh, to, to reach a certain level of uh, circulation of viewership. It can be, I don't know, uh, a YouTube video. Uh, whenever you see sometimes YouTube videos, uh, uh, you know, conspiracy theory YouTube videos with two million views. Yes, we have to assume that we have two million people who actually believe in the outrageous things that they are said in those videos, but some of those are also uh, fake clicks, basically, or uh, the, produ the product of click work. So, again, how do we buy click works? And I would like to finish with this, just to give you an idea of how poorly these people are paid and how it is important to actually think about their working conditions in order to uh, counter fake news circulation. Okay, the idea is that you can go, uh, I don't know, on resellers, uh, 
platforms such as these, which eventually will bring you to other uh, uh, companies like this one that will sell you, I don't know, in this case, Instagram followers. You can either buy active or passive Instagram followers. Of course, active followers means that they can actually read to what you say and they cost a lot compared to the passive ones who are not very expensive. We are talking about really a, a work that is considered extremely cheap and de-skilled. And despite this, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of people who performed it, uh, for instance, perform it in, in countries such as uh, France. Uh, you know, for, to give you an idea of how, um, how much a French click worker is paid, here is an example taken from actually the socialist uh, campaign uh, in 2017. Uh, they were inviting people to vote in the primaries, okay? And uh, as you see, uh, each click is paid 70 cents of a euro, okay? So you say, it's, it's not a lot. Well, brace yourself because the uh, the more you go east, the less the least you're paid. Uh, um, so that's give you an idea. Uh, if you go to Russia, it's we're talking about 48 kopecks, which in my estimates is seven cents of a dollar. I I'm uh, I want to be corrected if I'm wrong, please. But uh, uh, again, wait for it. Let's go to Pakistan where uh, a click is paid 0 .0, 0 0.06 cents, not a dollar. We're talking about 0 0.06 cents for a uh, share on Facebook. And if you go to Indonesia uh, and uh, you want to buy, for instance, Instagram followers, uh, each, uh, sorry, Instagram likes, each like is actually paid 0 0.008 cents. Again, this has to do with the average uh, wage level of each of those countries. This has also to do with the fact that we are actually facing a micro workforce, a click workforce that is unaccounted for and that has a role to play, especially if we consider those as exploited workers. Because in many cases, according to existing evidence, and there is an increasing body of evidence, these people are in, let's say, they are performing um, a, a type of work that cannot be construed as free. Uh, they have some kind of uh, uh, constraints that force them in this kind of situation. And, uh, uh, and so I would like to finish with uh, uh, not one takeaway message, but actually a set of takeaway messages. And the first one is that despite the emphasis on bots, on automation of the circulation of fake news, uh, uh, the viral circulation of social platform is the crux of the information manipulation problem. Again, let's not focus uh, exclusively on the content of cons conspiracy videos or conspiracy posts. Let's focus on the enormous amount of likes and shares that this uh, uh, information receives. And the secret ingredient of that circulation, of this success, of this visibility, actually, of this uh, vocal minority is digital labor. It's actually the labor that is negotiated and bought and accounted for on m platforms like the one that I've been talking about. And digital labor can be described as a taskified, meaning reduced to small tasks and underpaid human labor, not uh, automatic process. It's human labor performed by millions of click workers. And uh, this is actually the secret ingredient of this viral circulation. And to fight against this, we have to probably adopt, let's say, creative strategies that in some case, well, first of all, uh, involve recognizing uh, the invisible workforce that circulates this information, and uh, also to come up with the ideas and, uh, and policy measures to protect them socially speaking, politically speaking, economically speaking, because recognizing and providing them with better pay, better working condition can actually also provide them with more rights, including the rights to say no to this kind of uh, dangerous and uh, extremely controversial tasks such as, um, um, such as face, fake news circulation. So the possibility to refuse malicious tasks, imagine you are a a Mexican click worker and you are, you know, offered the possibility to click 
and become a fan of Donald Trump. If you can refuse it, this is something that it, in terms of your rights is important, in terms of your own, well, livelihood and well-being in the future is probably another good uh, thing. So by giving click workers voice against propaganda-related projects, we are also uh, helping counter this kind of fake news circulation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Antonio. And let's jump right into the discussion. Who has questions or comments? Wait for the microphone. Thank you, Antonio. That was a wonderful talk. And I, I love the way you gave faces to the people who are helping generate fake news. I guess I have uh, two questions about your abstraction from content, which I take the point of. Uh, one is that a lot of research needs to be done on what's going on with social media, with Twitter and other things. And my understanding is that a lot of sociologists actually rely on the Mechanical Turk to do research. So this is uh, a hybridized human machine co-evolution and uh, I just wanted to say that I think we're kind of stuck with that uh, on either side. The other thing I want to say is that um, there are also a lot of digital labor people involved in trying to deal with really horrific content. Um, in particular, Human Rights Watch people, I'm thinking of Alexa Koenig, who just got a MacArthur Award at uh, the UC Berkeley Law School. So she trains, she crowdsources and trains her undergraduates very, very carefully in how to reconstruct the evidence of maybe what happened on a corner in homes in Syria. People are risking their lives, uploading very horrible images in an effort to retain or construct some kind of merit narrative in the future. And European laws now mandate that after 24 hours, something very horrible has to be taken down. And Alex is really worried because people have risked their lives for that. But there's a huge digital labor issue, it seems to me, in protecting workers and training them properly to handle this kind of horrific imagery. Um, and I don't know whether I quite agree automation alone, there's this myth of the algorithm doing it. But um, maybe some of this click work will be open-ended invitation to respond to that as the next step. Thank you, well, uh, thank you for, for those two quick on the that so as social scientists from such as Amazon Mechanical Turk, I would like to say, and again, this is not discipline bashing, that it's mainly social psychologists, not sociologists as such. Because, no, again, it's not discipline bashing. It's actually, uh, it has to do with the kind of history of a discipline, uh, and I know that Barbara will say something probably about that, uh, uh, history of a discipline and relying, for instance, in the past on uh, students, and now you can rely also on Amazon Mechanical Turkers. The point is that, again, this is something that is extremely uh, visible but not prevalent in terms of who are the requesters on Amazon Mechanical Turk. But Amazon Mechanical Turk is just a drop in the sea of uh, microwork in general. We have a, a rough estimate over 100 million people performing microwork all over the world because they are big China uh, platforms, Chinese platforms such as Chubajie or Taskcien, probably never heard of, of them, but they, are, they have each 18 million, 15 million microworkers each. Uh, and they are not.